I'm Pastor Dawn from Epworth United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad you're joining us tonight for this beautiful Christmas Eve. I pray that God has been with you in the days and weeks leading up to tonight, and that tonight you truly feel surrounded by the presence of God. A lot of us are spending Christmas Eve and Christmas Day a lot differently than we ordinarily might. And some of us might be feeling lonely, isolated, disappointed, grieving the presence of those who aren't with us. I pray God's blessing on all of us tonight, that as we celebrate his birth once more, that we find a particular hope, a special hope, a new hope, a peace, a love, a joy that we can take from tonight into all the moments that follow this one and into the world. I'm here at home tonight because like most of us, we are worshiping and, and doing most of our things from home right now. So this is my house. And as we go through our service tonight, you'll hear music and uh, welcome words and scriptures and prayers from people, um, members of Epworth, who are coming to you from their homes and, and different, different places. So I pray that it brings you joy, this uh, time in worship tonight. Let's begin by lighting the Advent candles. As we light the Christ candle, we welcome the tiny babe, born in a manger, hope of the world, bringer of peace, joy of our hearts and love incarnate, we welcome you. Let Christ be born in us today. Let's pray together. God with us, Emmanuel, all things came into being through you. Bring new life into being inside of us that we may better reflect your hope, your love, and your grace to those around us. Let Christ be born in us today. Amen. Our Old Testament prophecy is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. And this was written about 700 years before the birth of Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Oh, <laughs> 
angel appears to Mary, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived of her in her is, is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and, he, and they named him Jesus. Shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God is to human hearts the blessings of his hand. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. I am reading from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. Jesus is born. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. in the sky look down where he lay the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay the cattle all knowing the baby awakes but little Lord Jesus no This reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you, 
is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while 
shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him blood, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate, where rocks and ass are speeding? Good Christians fear for sinners hear the silent word is sweeting. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him blood, the babe, the son of Mary. I'm reading Wise Men Bring Gifts, Matthew 2, 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star as it's rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all his chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet who said, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be the shepherd, my people of, to shepherd my people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learn from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard that from the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and they paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gold, frankincense, and mirth. What gift can we bring? What present, what token, what words can convey it, the joy of this day? When grateful we come, remembering, rejoicing, what song can we offer in honor and praise? This gift we now bring, this present, this token, these words can convey it, the joy of this day. When grateful we come, remembering, rejoicing, this song we now offer in honor and praise. The Song of Zechariah, Luke 1, verses 68 through 70 and 76 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David. 
as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. It's my own tradition that rather than preaching on Christmas Eve, I like to read a story. This one is uh, an old classic written in 1885 by the Russian novelist Leo Tolstoy. It was known when he wrote it, and still is, um, by the title, Where Love Is, There God Is Also. We know it more often, the English translation, as the old shoemaker. I find that in stories like this one, sometimes the message of Christmas, the word of God, comes through particularly clearly. And this one really touched my heart this year. I hope it does yours too. Long ago, there lived an old shoemaker named Martin. Martin lived alone in his humble shop, but his work was of the finest quality, and he was always honest with his customers. He tried to live the way the Savior taught. One night, as he was sleeping, he heard a voice. Martin, Martin, look tomorrow on the street, for I am coming. Martin awoke, unsure if he had been dreaming. That morning, he set to work as usual, but could not help but look steadfastly out the window onto the street, just in case his beloved Savior appeared. As he was watching, Martin noticed an old soldier out in the freezing cold, shoveling snow. Martin invited him into his shop and gave him something warm to drink. Later in the day, Martin noticed a young mother cradling a small child in her arms. She had no coat. Martin insisted she come in and warm herself by the fire. He learned that the day before, she had sold her shawl to buy food. After she had eaten, the old cobbler gave her some coins and gave her his own coat. In the evening, an old woman selling some apples appeared. A hungry little boy came along and tried to steal an apple, but the woman grabbed him and threatened to take him to the police. Martin rushed out into the street and begged her to let the boy go. Martin paid for the apple himself and gave it to the boy, who promised to not steal again. Martin returned to his shop and kept working and when night came, Martin put his tools away, disappointed that he had waited all day and his savior had not come. As he lit the candle, however, a voice whispered to him, Martin, Martin, did you not recognize me? From the dim corner of his shop, the old soldier, the mother and her child, the boy and the old woman stepped into the light. It is I, they whispered. And then the old cobbler understood. He pulled out his well-worn scriptures and read these words. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And then Martin knew his dream had been real after all, and the Savior truly had visited him that day. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. 
what has come into being in him is life. And that life is the life of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Friends, this is our gospel hope. That no matter how dark things are in our lives or in the world, God is light and life and truth and beauty, and wonder, and peace, and love. Jesus is the Word made flesh, King, Savior, healer of our every ill, Emmanuel, God with us, light of the world. As you go into this Christmas night and look forward to the morning, I pray that we find the light from God that we most need that Christ be born in us once more, and that we bear the light of the world with us wherever we go. Friends, this is how we change the world. Tonight, members and friends of Epworth United Methodist Church will gather outside on our church front lawn at 8 p.m. to sing Silent Night by Candlelight and hopefully bring some Christmas joy to people in our neighborhood. You are invited to join us. For now, you might like to take a moment in prayer and name the sources of darkness that you see that are heavy on your heart. And then light your own candle and pray the light of God into those places where God is so needed. And as you do so, Know that God is with you, as close as your very breath, hearing and answering your prayer. Let's sing Silent Night together now with the Worldwide Choir of the United Methodist Church.
Merry Christmas, friends. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and always.